right, guys. I got the rocket. The rocket. The piece of crap rocket. Got it back on the table here. And I got a battery in it. So let's turn the controller on. Let's turn the uh, power on. And, you know, let's give it a spin. All right, so you know it's spinning the front wheels. These back wheels, though, they're spinning, but, I mean, you just lightly hold it, and the wheels just turn. I am no RC car genius. You know, now, I did do that episode where we talked about the slipper clutch, and uh, actually, I think what I'm going to do first here is I'm going to take this back thing off so it doesn't want to keep falling down on me. And that is a 2.5 millimeter. You know, I did order another slipper clutch. You know, I hate giving up on things, especially what this thing costs. But uh, there's got to, there, I don't know. And I did replace the rear end, thinking initially that was the issue. And, and it may be still be an issue. Maybe this rear end that I put in there is a piece of crap, too. So... Anyway, uh, thought I would uh, bring you guys along so you can see me screw up. And sorry, I'm sitting here looking at this Sentin, and it looks like that back fender or the back piece. I can't tell if it's an illusion because I got the case sitting on it. Air controller, or if I got something bent. Huh. Okay. It kind of looks like it's just kind of tweaked, twisted. Yeah, maybe that's all it is. Anyway, uh, sorry, I didn't mean to get distracted there. Sometimes I uh, do have the attention span of a hamster when it comes to some things. So we'll take this other side off, then we'll take the top off, and... Then we'll take a gander. I mean, I did pack that differential with a ton of grease, which, well, you know, too much can never be enough, right? So, I don't think that is the issue. It just had, it, it's got an opening in the bottom, so it doesn't, uh, like, have a reservoir where it holds fluid, you know, I'll try to show you, or I may have showed it in one of the other videos. I can't remember. This thing has been a total pain in my butt, and I want to like it. I love the way it looks, and I think it's really, really cute, cute. Um, but yeah, we gotta we gotta figure out what's going on here, and. You know, with this slipper clutch, um, you might have got that thing tightened down pretty good. Um, I will see if, you know what, I keep forgetting of, of, of a million Harbor Freight tools that I have here. You'd think I have, like, a ton of screwdrivers just lying around. I mean, not the screwdrivers, but pliers. And I don't. I have, like, one pair of pliers. So, spin that around, grab it, we're going to try to, that is not cooperating. Okay, uh, let's, because, right, I'm just going to take these out of here because uh, I'm sure once I get the uh, replacement slipper clutch, which I, I did find it on Amazon, it was $16.99, today is... September something, the day after Labor Day, 6th, 7th, I don't even know. And it's not supposed to be here until like the 26th, so I'm kind of guessing it came from China, or it's coming from China. The uh, Pirate, uh, I don't know if you can really see it sitting down there on the floor. Uh, I ordered the bottom plate for it. That thing is a bent up mess. And ordered that. Um, Banggood didn't actually even have it, so I ordered that from AliExpress, which I will do a 
a complete video on that because I have never swapped out the bottom on one of these things and I can pretty much bet that that's going to be uh, a very entertaining project. Okay, so those two in the back are different sizes. So I'm going to take this cover off here. And we'll see what we're looking at. Of course, I could uh, get me a little plastic trays to kind of put these screws in because see those two front screws are the same. It's the back screws. The back two screws are the longer ones. And I say this for myself. That way when I go to put this thing back together and I've waited three weeks for parts, I will have plumb forgot what goes where. Okay, so we got that we can lift up. This we can take out of the way. And see if, you know, I mean, I really just don't know what else it could be. I don't, there is a set screw in here. It is tight. So, and I know this thing can't, can't be cranked down that much. Now it looks, I think I may have mentioned, it looks very sim similar to a Traxxas uh, setup. I don't know if what Traxxas car it is, but it looks very similar. because it's underneath that plate. Apparently it, it is kind of covered up. But, I see it. I mean, if you're, if you're, I mean, you're seeing the back wheel spin. I just don't think that, uh, I don't really, honestly, I just don't, I don't think it's a slipper clutch, but I have been wrong before, and that's not the right one. Let's put this one back in here. I kind of really don't want to, now see, that's, that's pretty much tightened all the way down, so let's do this. Let's, let's just loosen this thing up. Maybe it's. Maybe it's too tight. Who knows? The dry shaft is moving because the front wheels are going. But I think I did take this out, and I don't think it. I don't think it looks bad. I mean, it doesn't like. It doesn't. It doesn't have like obvious signs at all. Hey, yeah, this thing's burned up, man. It's, there, there's nothing left to it. But see now, when I spin these back wheels, it's not even. Well, maybe it is messed up, man. I don't know. I can try taking that drive shaft out. Um. Um. So if I turn it on now, yeah, I don't know, man. I'm wondering if it is something inside the uh, rear differential right here and that that means taking uh, I think I had to take this off. 
I think I had to take that back piece out. Uh, you can definitely see where it was flinging grease. But I know that's new because at first, before I even started messing with the slipper clutch, I was messing with, I thought it was the differential. There's no obvious signs of cracking or anything like that. So, I don't really like, hear any, any crunching. I reckon, um, cause it's sitting right here where my finger is, and the uh, pinion gear looks good. It doesn't look stripped. <clears throat> and I guess you can take like a piece of paper and put it down between them and adjust you know your gap uh, just using a sheet of paper and so they say that that is the proper distance you should have between your uh, spur gear and your pinion gear so I don't know guys I am kind of at a loss but I guess um, since we're here uh, we might as well just go ahead and uh, what do I got to remove to just get the um, slipper clutch out? I forget. So let's just go ahead and remove that. That is going to hold the uh, shaft in. I don't think that's going to move enough to let me pull that shaft out of here, though. Nope. Maybe if we loosen this back one up. I forget. Honestly, I just forget. Whoa. Don't want to lose that wherever it just went. That is the uh, set screw. There it is. Yeah, we don't want to lose that. Because I do not have a replacement. I don't even know what size it is. So we'll just set it back down in there so it's not... We'll take this little plastic thing out. See if we'll then have enough room to, to nagle that out of there. No, I don't think so. Well, crap. What did I do last time? I'm trying to think. Did I end up having to loosen the whole back end? I just don't... Guys, I really... Ow, I really just don't remember. Um, there are... Looks like one... Two... Three... These two here, definitely. I'm not sure about that last one over there. Yeah. If I loosen those up, these three here, I should be able to uh, kind of move the motor up. Um, let's see here. It says twos. I think they're twos. Really need to get my little driver set. I do have one. Yeah, you should be able to see okay well, even with that without that light.
I did get the wheels in. Uh, I 3D printed these. They appear to be working okay, but a set of wheels wasn't expensive. It's just the rims. It's not the tires. These are beadlock, which is actually kind of nice. Uh, surprisingly, for the price of this thing, it has beadlock wheels. I know on the uh, Sentin and the Big Rock, those are not beadlock wheels. And I have spent uh, a pretty penny on replacement tires. You know, and I, I know I sound like I get aggravated, because <laughs> really I do get aggravated uh, with these things, but they're still fun. And, you know, with the kind of abuse, you know, we do to them, it's not surprising that they break. Okay. So we've got the motor loosened up, but it's kind of got a uh, you can see it right here where my finger is. Okay. There's a little cradle that that is sitting down in. So I think I am going to have to um, disconnect the front differential or the back. And since I'm kind of guessing here that uh, it's either the slipper clutch or the rear diff. You know, it'd make more sense to take the rear diff off. Now, I, I'm not positive, but I think, let me look back under there again. Let me just disconnect this battery. We don't need that on there. See, so there's this four screws right here. Uh, I don't know if you can see the top two. They're, I'd have to move the camera. Uh, there's four screws holding the bottom of this in, and then there are two screws going through here. There's one here and one here that are actual, I think they're nuts. Yeah, that's a tiny little socket right there. But I think then uh, that will release the lower control arms. Uh, and they'll be flopping, but I might be able to pull that whole assembly off and then take it apart. Um, let's see here. Set it upside down. So that's a, that's a two. Let me, I've been wanting to try this thing. I got it. Um. Got this handy dandy little nut Nico nut drivers. And I went to Harbor Freight and got one of their tiny little Bauer uh, cordless drills. And this will fit right down in there. So. And I'm not too worried about this thing because it's it's not really powerful at all. Four volt. Now these wheels are gonna go flopping when I take those uh, other nuts out. But we'll see if we can do this a much easier way than taking uh, everything off of it. that off. We're making progress. Whoa, see how, nope, you can take the whole thing off now. Look at that. So here's the whole rear end. And everything is going flying everywhere because it's out of balance. But I can go ahead and put, I'll go ahead and put those screws back in uh, for the engine. Motor, sorry. Motor, not engine. We'll go ahead and put those back in. I don't think they needed to come out anyway. And, uh -oh. So we got the axle there. Let's get it lined up.
trying to see where the holes are. Let's get one on one side and one on the other. That may, that way we know we're lined up with our screw holes on the bottom of that plate for the uh, motor. I'd like to get some other little RC cars once I get my garage cleaned out some. Get some of them tiny little ones. That way over the winter when it's uh, cold and freezing out and ain't got nothing better to do. Not that I'm ever lacking really anything to do. Uh, oh, we've got something I'm working on. But, you know, maybe like make a little course here in the garage and just kind of tool around. It's kind of fun. Drink some beer and Have a good time. I'd say smoke, but I'm trying to cut back on that. So, for you guys out there who don't smoke, don't ever smoke. If you got, you know, younger people watching this channel, please don't ever smoke. It is one nasty, horrible habit. But if you do smoke, just cut back. Get some exercise. Go for walks. It's good for you. Okay, so we're going to set him right there and get the amount of grease off my finger. Um, slipper cut clutch is right here. And we don't want to lose the end of that thing. Or we'll never get our drive shaft back in. Let's tighten that up. And see this thing. I would think it should spin. This thing should spin freely. I mean, I know it's spinning on the bearing, but I thought uh, this thing should spin. I'm able to turn. You know what? I really, I don't remember when I was first messing with this thing. You know, to see if it was spinning. Yeah. All right. Somebody's here. I think it's the mailman. Trying to see if this will spin. It is not spinning at all. And it's pretty much uh, loosened out as far as it's going to go. So I think we're just going to have to take a wait and see approach. And we'll get a baggie. And because, you know, you know, lessons learned, you got cats. I love my cats, but my cats are annoying. Is she coming up here or is she going down the driveway? She's going on down. Um, yeah, yeah, back to the cats. You know, they, they get up on these tables and knock everything everywhere. And I got two stray boys, Fathead and B-Dub, and they're not fixed. So, all the all of my other cats are fixed. So if you got animals, get them fixed. And uh, yeah, they like to pick on the other cats. And then uh, crap goes to flying. Okay, so I'm looking down the side here. You can see that, and you can see it spinning just fine. But. Good. They do spin independent of each other. Um, well, um, I can dig up uh, the other one and kind of compare. I don't think those screws are in there tight. Those shocks. No. 
They go into plastics, they don't tighten down really tight anyway. But, I mean, it doesn't feel the smoothest, but, um, let me see, um, where did I even put that? an effort to stay somewhat organized. So, Harbor Freight boxes, um, they're great for putting all these little parts in. And, yeah, I meant to add on, you know, I got this Willy Bar uh, for this thing here, and it does not fit. And when you buy, when you buy these rockets, you can get them either without the spare tire, and a, uh, it'll come with a Willy Bar, or you can get it, you know, like I did with the spare tire. I'd rather have the extra tire. But, yeah, so I went ahead and bought that thinking, oh, yeah, this is going to work. No, it didn't work. You know. All right, so this one does spin to uh, left and right. And honestly, it feels way smoother. This is the original one that was in there. I did take it apart and look inside of it, and everything looked fine. Uh, but I noticed, and if you look back at the video, I did do a video on that. Uh, it was definitely making a different pitched sound. And if you look at the parts for them, they mentioned that one is uh, plastic and the other one is a CNC machined one. Well, the, the I guess the original one was supposed to be like uh, plastic, but uh, it is not plastic. It is metal. So when I bought this replacement and see this, yeah, I mean, I know. I don't know if you can hear that. But it definitely sounds a little crunchier. So, I don't know, guys. I guess I'm going to have to end up uh, taking this thing apart again and maybe putting that other, the original one back in. And then when the new slipper clutch shows up, um, I will test it when it gets here and see if I can spin it um, because this thing should spin. And but you know what? We're here right now. So let's go ahead and how do we even take this thing apart? Is there a screw down in there? No. I don't see one. There's no screw on that. There is a flat side. So be mindful of that. There's a flat side for your set screw. But maybe there is. Huh? Anything. And that set screw uh, in the back here, the very back here, is just to hold it on to that piece right there. A little silver piece, the axle, you know, going into the differential. Uh, okay, so this thing has to come apart. And maybe take this off. Let's take the uh, spring off. Watch this thing go flying across the room. Okay, so you got that piece. Let's sit there. We got that piece. Then we got a spring. We got a bearing. Okay, then you got this plate. And that 
slipper clutch looks fine. I mean, from what I can see, I mean, it doesn't look like it's been burned up or it's too short. There are two. There's a little pin right down the side there. Uh, if we take that out and don't lose that, then you should be able to pull this side out, which we can. I'll set that right there. Then you have the same setup on the other side. Okay. And that disc looks perfectly fine too. Yeah, it even says asbestos. So be mindful when you're if you decide to sand these, wear proper asbestos asbestos gear. <laughs> okay. Um No, I mean I got it here. Let me shoot it with a little bit of brake clean. Maybe it got oil on it. Now it's definitely got dirt on it. So I just dropped it. Okay. And I don't think it is side specific. So we're going to put this back in here. We're going to set that on there. We're going to drop this back down in the center. Drop our pin in. Okay, see how that moves? See how that's moving? That should be what it does. It should move. But we'll clean this other side off too. Okay, so, I mean, it's tight, but it is turning. All right, so let's put our pin. There should be a hole, I believe. In that. Yes, there is. Did I put these backwards? They look the same. Oh, duh. Got to put the pin in first. Okay, so the pin is in. Then we're going to drop this down onto that. So they're together. Then we had our bearing, which the uh, And, okay, I took it off, I'll show you. I took it off that way with that part that's sticking out. Uh, pushed in towards that, towards the base of this, base of this. Okay, so does it go that way? Because you know I did have this apart before and I wonder if I screwed up. And maybe I put it back together wrong. Which wouldn't be the first time. You know what? I'm going to have to get on. And I wonder if I did. I wonder if I actually put that uh, on there wrong. And maybe that's why it wasn't working right. Yeah, it's still not wanting to. It's still not wanting to spin. Let me see if I can grab a hold of that end since it's flat. No, it's still not spinning. Hmm. Oh, I got questions and I got no answers. Well, at this point, all I can do is wait for the other one to come in 
and compare the two and see if that piece that that bearing rides around right there see if that uh, is the same setup the discs on the sides uh, in, you know on both sides of this are the same they look to be the same thickness they got the same plate um, so they can't really screw that up and but I would think until you tightened this spring down and put tension on these two plates here, these two plates, with this spring all the way out, that should be the loosest setting. And you should be able to spin that disc. Unless I am wrong. Whoa. Drop that. Okay, see, now, now it is spinning. With it all the way out, it is spinning. So, if I turn in just a hair, I can't spin it anymore. Hmm. I say, hmm. I'm not sure, guys. Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm gonna Google uh, that Traxxas slipper clutch and see if it is a similar style of setup. And maybe check YouTube. See if anybody has anything on there on the, the style of slipper clutch and see how its uh, operation should be. So stay tuned. I'll be back. Okay, I wanna show you guys something. I noticed this uh, front axle, and maybe that is part of the problem. Okay, here is your little piece that goes over the axle, uh, over the actual differential. You'll see there's two set screws in here. All right. Well, down inside there, and this thing is not fun to get to. You can see there is a, just like on this shaft right here, there's a flat side to that little metal piece. Well, uh, this pin, this has to go over that, and so it'll lock down and not spin. And actually, mine pulled right off, so uh, that wasn't good. Now, getting this in here without taking all this stuff off the front is not the easiest thing either. So, if you have a pair of hemostats, Harbor Freight, a couple bucks, you know, uh, it'll allow you to reach down in there that way you can kind of spin your wheel to make sure it's up and then slide this thing over and uh, guess what it is not that there is a the, the um, um, steering servo arms are in the way well crapola Let's see if I can, okay, well, plan B may be to turn your wheel one way and then get, Let's see if it spins that, okay, it is spinning, okay, um, let's see if I can reach, down in there. I see it. Hopefully it is lined up. And I can get this down in here to tighten it. Man, it is dark down in there. And every time you just slightly touch this wheel, it, it rotates that thing. Okay, so I ain't got no way to hold that. Okay, um, I'm thinking plan B. Man, I really did not want to disconnect the whole front end. But also, too, I can't tell if that uh, 
set screw is sitting on the flat part. Let's see if I can see down through here. Maybe I can. No. I can see the end of it. But I can't see the part uh, that I need to tighten. And I can't tell if that set screw hey, okay it does look like it's lined up uh, on that one side but man I'm telling you getting uh, well let me let me take the tire off maybe that'll give me the extra room that I need and help with it spinning around There you go, just come right off my stand here. It's been all over the place. Give me out of the adjustment. Okay, so the wheel is off. Yes, it definitely is much easier if the wheel is off. Okay, let's see if we can tell if our set screw is still lined up to a flat part. Uh, looks like it may be pretty close. Maybe a, maybe a hair to the left. Maybe just a hair. Yeah, that looks like I might do it. All right, so with that off, should be able to put this in. Oh, it's spun. Tell you what, let me let me get this in here and get it at least snugged up. Oh. And there it goes, rolling across the driveway, park on the garage. Yeah, this is a real pain, guys. So, uh, if you ever have to take this thing off, be uh, very mindful. Uh, it's not the easiest thing to put back on and get lined up. Okay, I'm trying to get these set screws to where they're just even with the inside. Okay, so we got that. Our, whatchamacallit, is, well, it don't matter uh, which side you put it in. I'm just trying to get it to where um, it's lined up with those set screws. So that's on there. Now if I'm very careful, like I said, just like in the game of operation, uh, the problem is you put that thing in there and it likes to spin. Okay, let me check. While I've got that in there, Yes, it looks like it is on the flat spot. Okay, so that's good and tight. So I should be able to spin the wheel around now to the other one and tighten it down. Sorry, you can't see in here what I'm doing, but you know what? This damn thing is still, it's spinning on here. What the hell? So I got a set screw on the other side of this. That is sitting. Okay, let me take this wheel off. OK, 
Okay, so I can see that. And where is my... Did that set screw come out of there? Kind of looks like it did, but... I'm still just trying to see down in here where that flat spot is. And it looks like it is not, not lined up. And it does look like that set screw is missing out of there. Or that's the one that's loose. Well, that's tight. So it must be the other one. <sighs> Let's try spinning it around. But you know what? Oh, that's right. This frame is bent. You can definitely tell. So is it spinning now? And is it going to come loose? Honestly, that looks like it's bent too. Somebody whacked something good with this. It wasn't me. Hmm. Let's see if we can loosen this back up. Wrong size. Let's see if we can spin it around. This is quite the, quite, now see I can see that flat spot right there and it looks perfectly aligned. And now I pushed it all the way back to where it's sitting. I think I'm going to need another set screw. I think that one's stripping out. I have no idea what size they are. But it's in there now, so if we take the shaft, put it in there. It is spinning both wheels. Okay. So then we can take this and line it up with our slipper clutch. We should be good there. All right, uh, I'm going to pause this for a minute, and then I gotta uh, get my four screws ready to put the bottom back in. And make sure I heard something fall on the floor. Uh, I think it was a plastic plate or something. Yeah, that's what it was. This plastic plate fell on the floor. All right, so we've got uh, two screws right here. Three. Need one more. There's four. <clears throat> okay. I'll be back. <laughs> 